So look who's here with me. On the right is Jeffrey from Real Nifty Vintage and Misty from Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter. And we've got Mary Beth and Laura from Fat Bird Finds. And over there filming is Patrick from Trusty Huckster Mercantile. And I am so excited about this. Hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. So I have been saying since the beginning that my goal with my channel, besides helping everybody understand and appreciate their stuff more, is to bring the real world and the online world of antiques and vintage together. And here we are actually in person, meeting each other and having just the best time. So it just it's part of what's so great about collecting is it's very collegial and you get to meet interesting people who have similar ideas and tastes and it's just really fun. So let's go on in and see what we find. There's several other shops here too, but we're gonna just get started here. So we got to all start this morning at my little storage house and everybody had a good time. I had a bunch of stuff from estates and they came and shopped around, but you can see that on their channels. And now we are here touring around Western Kentucky antique stores. So you'll get to see videos from all of us. I'm going to do my usual and tell you about the things that we're seeing and everyone else will have their take on it. So you can watch all of us and see what we came up with. I like the old bird cage. Bird cages with stands are very popular decorative items now. That one's priced at 75. That seems to be about what they're going for these days. This store always does a nice job of making things appealing and they have a little bit of a country vibe. So you've got the clothes on the line in the window here with the quilts and the old wash stand, which I hear water. I think it's been turned into a water feature and looky there. Isn't this neat the way they've got this set up with the old pump? circulating into the old wash stand. It's a great way to use this sort of thing. If you've got one of these and it's sitting around, you can actually have some really nice soothing sound. I like the sign. I agree that the best things in life are not things, but things are pretty fun and they're what brought us together today. And so there you go. Things can get you together and then the people are what really count. So it's a wonderful thing about the collecting game. Neat old radio here, the old Silvertone. Silvertone was a Sears brand. And so anything you see Silvertone from guitars to radios to television, they were named Silvertone originally because they wanted you to know that it had a nice sound. This place is really big. There's an upstairs and a downstairs as well as this main floor, but I'm going to look around the main floor first because that's just the way my brain works. Neat old lantern here. We see these a lot. These are the Ad Lake non-sweating lamp meaning that it wouldn't sweat into the glass and make it hard to see. It was very important because these were railroad signals and you had to have green, yellow, red. This was so that the switchman would know whether the switch was open the right way or not. They came up with these after there was a horrible train crash in the 1870s caused by a misthrown switch and a watch that stopped. And after that you get railroad watches that were guaranteed to not stop and you get the railroad switches so people knew what they were looking at. This space here has a lot of old kerosene oil lamps and they actually have parts as well. So this is a useful resource. If you've got a neat old kerosene lantern that needs some help, they've got the rings, they've got the Aladdin burners, they've got all these little chimneys, and this is pretty useful for putting together old stuff that needs a little bit of help. Here's some nice lamp bases as well. Some of these are by the Aladdin Company, some are by others. I thought this one in the blue for $29.95 was actually a pretty good deal. It's a pressed pattern. It may be a 1960s or 50s version of an earlier pressed pattern, but looking at the color blue, I think it might have a little more age than that. Here we've got a really pretty Franciscan Coronado piece. This coffee carafe here. It's very tall and graceful. Coronado came out about 1940. They have it marked Franciscan ware, which it is. The burgundy or maroon is actually a harder color to find and on the bottom it's hard to see in this deep place, but that's the Gladding McBean Franciscan ware mark. 
This was one of their first very collectible patterns after they started making everything Franciscan where in the 30s they just said G. McBee for Gladding McBean, the company in California that made them. They had made sewer tile and roof tile and things like that for years and then they went into this sort of wear as a response to the depression and it really kept them in business and did very well. They ended up making desert rose and ivy and all those great patterns that we know. I'm going to check the lid to make sure it's in good shape, but it's only $12. And even though these pieces don't sell for as much as they used to, it used to be this was $95. So I imagine it's still worth a pretty good amount. They've got some pretty furniture in here too. This piece here is mohair. It's going to be 1930s approximately. It's a great green color and this is the original. This is this stuff that's sort of velour-like, but it's a little more stiff and bristly. And it was considered a good upholstery back in the day because it stood up to wear pretty well. This one also has its original upholstery in this great red color. And they've got these priced at $4.75 for the couch and $100, uh, looks like $185 on the red chair. You know, again, look at new furniture. These prices are really not out of line with what chairs and sofas cost now. Misty was telling us earlier today that she got one of these fireplace sets with the fake logs and the cardboard fireplace in the original box for a very good price at an auction in Indiana. People really like these because just like they're buying gas insert fake fireplaces now, well people like that look but they don't necessarily want the mess or they don't have a chimney. So this is a way you can have a mantle in your house without having to deal with all those other things. And then I mentioned Silvertone with Sears. Well, here is an early Silvertone phonograph record player. The Silvertone phonograph, this would have been sold in the Sears catalog in the late 1910s. It looks like it's in really good shape. It says it works well. It's priced at $225, which is a good price. That's really the low end of what these sell for now. People like the portable tabletop ones more than the big floor mount ones nowadays. It used to be the opposite but now people want things that take less room. I think the rest of the group are smarter shoppers than I am because they're all in the 40% off booth, which is the place to be. <laughs> yeah, how can you go wrong, right? This is Spode China out of England, and this pattern is Hazel Dell. Spode is usually pretty well marked, and this Copeland Spode mark, this is gonna be early to mid 20th century. And these pieces individually still sell pretty well because people are pattern matching. They have $49 on that whole stack. There was a time that that would have been such a giveaway price that people would have just run at it. And it's 40% off, so it's still a pretty good deal. Patrick is from Chicago. I'll have to show him this and see if he saw it. This is one of the flyers they put out. This is actually a Chicago street guide advertised and promoted by Richard Daly the mayor in 1971. He was the mayor for a very long time. During that era was when they would talk about vote early and vote often in Chicago. The dailies were very strong politicians and I would say probably polarizing, but people really loved them or really didn't. I like this metal bench. I think this is really neat with the slats. It has some age. You can tell by the wear in the middle there. This one's priced at 100 It says it has cushions, and that's important. Even if you find one of these and the cushions are bad, keep the cushions because you need that pattern. It makes it much easier for someone to make new ones for you if you can't do it yourself. And I said it was priced at 100 but actually at 40% off, it's only $60. If I had more room for furniture right now, that would be pretty tempting. This needle cupboard is 475 minus 40 percent so that's going to make it about 300. Pretty good deal for old farm cupboard with the wainscot. This grooved wood is wainscoting and that's neat. That's going to date probably to about 1910. We can tell that by the wainscot and also by the design on the latches. Okay I have to show this because this is donkey party and two other games. My mother and my father went to Tijuana in the early 1960s and were asked if they wanted to go to a donkey party and my mom, having seen this as a little girl, said sure. And my father, who had been in the service and knew that a donkey party in Mexico at that time was, well, something I don't really want to describe, but 
it did not involve something that my mother needed to go to. And he promptly told them, no, thank you. And my mom was really bad until he told her what that was about. They have a few little chips on the paint, so I may or may not get them, but these are priced well. These are new art. New art was sort of a lower end knockoff of Frank art in the 1930s who did very high end deco pieces. I think you can see the new art cartouche there. It's a circular thing that says new art with, I believe, a copyright symbol in the middle. And they made really cool stuff too. These at the discount are actually only $22. So it's a good price. If they were in a little better condition, I would get them. Well, I see a 50% off sign here. I'm going to see if everybody's discovered this already or if there might be something for me. It's one thing when you get a bunch of us together shopping, we definitely all kind of go for the same sort of stuff, but not really. We all have our own take. We had a nice luncheon together and talked about the sorts of things we look for. It just showed me that there is room for everyone in the antique business and the vintage business because everyone has a little bit of a different take on what they like and what jumps out at them and what they think is interesting. And that's what makes the world go round. This half-off booth has one really cute thing down here I'd like to take a look at. It's this jolly old fellow singer. That is a smoker. That little guy there, tall and narrow with his mouth open. Those are going to be German usually, although later ones could be Japanese. They're from right around before and just after the Second World War, and they're pretty collectible. However, I'm looking at this guy closer, and he may be a reproduction. He's priced at $29.95. You'd put the cigarette in and then the smoke would curl out of the ears and everything. But I'm looking and he seems just a little too perfect. The porcelain's a little too white. The mouth hasn't got any wear like it was ever used. So I'm thinking that might be newer than it looks. Don't fall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that looks like me. I am one of the clumsiest people I know. Oh yes, the old price guides. Oh, I love Metlocks. Yeah, they made really neat stuff. Yep. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's what they were at one time. It's funny, you know, I got rid of a lot of my references and now I wish I had some of them back yeah. and they are starting to sell because people are realizing what good information there yeah, is. They're, they're fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I got to check that out. I'm glad you told me about that. Oh, and it's just after Father's Day, so we got to show you this. If this is what you were doing, you better get your dad something nice for Father's Day. Here's a different kind of fake fireplace. This one actually has the cabinet in the top, and it's for mica. These were out in the late 60s, and they were considered very schmaltzy at the time. They definitely have hinges, so that does open up as a cabinet. Some people would even put stereos in these. You'll see sometimes a, an old hi-fi set or something in there, so we'll take a look. Okay, and here's the after view, and sure enough, you see the stereo cabinet in one side. Solid state stereophonic. Wow, look at that. Lion brand. And then here you have the bar. So you've got your little places for your cocktail shakers and your glasses and all of that. They're really fun and a lot of modernists like these just because they have a certain kitsch value. People who like to have a bar in the house, it's a cool look. And I think it's neat. The price on this is rather high. It's $5.65. I'm sure they'd give some discount, but to be honest, these do run several hundred generally because they didn't make a whole lot and now they're considered really interesting to people. So there is your fireplace bar. I wanted to show this because I've mentioned rum rill in a video recently. This is Rumrill, but Rumrill was an agency for selling other people's wares. It was a trade name that was invented. This one has the Rumrill stamp on it, but their wares were either made by Red Wing or I believe Shawnee. They actually sourced from both of those companies. So you'll see a lot of glazes and shapes that are familiar to you from other potteries, but they had some things made that were specific just to them. This one's priced at $37.50. 
Rumrail does seem to actually command a little bit of a premium over the companies that made them. These are pretty neat. These are postcards from about 1910, and they show the Grand Army of the Republic. Today and yesterday, you've got the old uh, fellow in the blue coat with the then modern soldier from around the time of the Spanish-American and soon-to-be First World Wars. In memoriam, above you've got veteran soldiers of the Civil War, 61 to 65. These are priced at $5 each. That's a pretty good price for these early litho ones that are military and patriotic. The daughter of the regiment is particularly interesting to me. You don't see women depicted in these very often at all. I gotta say, that Misty is a power shopper. Look at this pile she's got going. We've only been in here about 15 minutes, but she got a good deal on the Hager horse for $15. That's cool. So while I'm thinking of it, Please comment in the space below here and also hit the thumbs up button to like this video. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button below. Also hit the bell below to be notified of new videos coming every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And thank you so much for following along. Let's go back to this video. In the old days, this is what payphones looked like. Could be very basic but they definitely worked. And if it took a long time for you to get the operator, well, you might look like this by the end. There's the old payphone inside. And you would actually be able to shut this door for privacy, which we don't get these days with the cell phone. It's priced at 2,000. They're hard to find. This one says it came out of my uncle's tavern in Geneva, Illinois in the 1950s. That is a pretty cool thing to see. We seem to have a skeleton thing going on in this mall. This uh, poor guy got in the bathtub and was so comfortable he never got out, but at least he's smiling. Neat looking old flag there. On this side, they have a wall of, to me, rather interesting religious icons and art and prints. I bought a really neat piece here once that was a 3D flash view. Hello there. We are all social distancing, so no masks today because we've spent the whole day together six feet apart. So we are being good. Oh, there we go. There's the flash view. I love these things. I found, a, I found one like this here before, and here's this one. It's where it's 3D, so you have the ascension after the crucifixion. This one shows the Last Supper and then a portrait of Jesus and the clock in the middle. This one is priced at $42. I think I got about $65 for the last one I sold. So I have to say it's kind of tempting. We will see what we can do here. You see a lot of old chromolithography in religious icons. And this one is interesting because it has the Tomb of the Virgin. And then you have the rites being performed, the angel coming to attend and the little cherubic figures, also angels, over the top. These would have been printed mostly in Italy on flocked paper around 1900. And that's priced at 38. These are sick call sets up here. You would open the lid and that would have your holy water and other things for performing healing rites or in some cases last rites. They're priced at about 25 to 30 a piece, which is a typical price for them. Hello. <laughs> I'm spying on everybody. This is a fun store. It's got all these great little rooms. Ooh, flamingos. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, come look. It's right in here. Jeffrey and I both have a flamingo thing. There's some cute vintage hats for $6 each. A lot of the people who buy these are doing dress up or parties. I've even seen adults have parties where it's like a social luncheon and they don't want to do the red hat thing, so they do the vintage hat thing, which I think personally is more fun anyway. There's a little baby Hitchcock painted chair. 
This one's going to be from the 1950s, but this style originally was done as country furniture in the United States at about 1810. Here's some signage, and I like signs. This one is Gulf Pride. This is going to be 1950s approximately. It's got, it is an original. It's got chips on the enamel. They have that one priced at 100 Nowadays, they go a little bit less in that condition. They used to go for that price. On the other hand, this Coke clock, if it works or could be repowered, is only 75 and that's a pretty cheap price. Then down here, vintage Nashville ashtrays from one of the TV affiliates. Say, even though it looks very deco, this WTVF really is a style you'd see probably in about 1970. So a little newer than they look, but they're only $3 a piece. If the Nashville flea market was going on right now, I'd probably pick a couple of those up, but we're waiting for that to start again. This napkin holder is a Fiesta go-along from the 1980s or 90s in the lilac color, and lilac's pretty desirable. This one is wood. Homer Lachlan had them made to go with the Fiesta wear. It's $15. I suspect that's a pretty good price. Lilac is one of the most sought after of the newer colors. I wanted to show this tooled leather purse. I don't know if there's any way to tell. We think of these as usually being Mexican, but actually here in Kentucky, prisoners were taught leather craft in the state prison in Catawba, which is not far from here. So this is entirely possibly a prison made item they would make these and sell them back in the 50s and 60s when this style of pressed leather purses was really popular. I can't find anything to prove that one way or another. Sometimes you'll see a marking. The fact that it doesn't say Mexico makes me think there's a good chance that it's from here. The only thing I don't see on it is the price, so we'll have to find out about that. Here's a Hassock fan. This is one of these you sit on top and it blows out underneath you so it keeps you cool on a hot summer day. It's priced at 45 These can sell for substantially more than that now. Uh, this one's got a little bit of a crack, so I think it's priced right for what it is, but I've seen them go as high as double that. This definitely is the Mall of Skeletons. This one is still learning to play the pump organ and hasn't had great success yet, apparently. Pump organs are actually a lot of work because you had to push those pedals and get the bellows to go to get any sound out of it, and then they had all these stops. This one has eight stops. The truth is that pump organs only could make about eight different sounds, but as time went on, they started adding more and more stops in order to make people think that they were getting more for their money. But they were actually just duplications of the sounds they already made. So this one's going to be earlier because of that, because they're not playing that game with the customer yet. This means it's probably 1880s approximately, or 1890s, and they typically sell for a few hundred dollars now. It's a very specialized market, but the people who love them really enjoy them, and they have a very distinctive sound. Now, here's something we don't see a lot of in Kentucky, and that is modernist furniture from the 50s. This looks like right off the set of the Lucille Ball show when they moved to Hollywood at first, with that deep tufted diamond shape in the back and the way that the base curves up into the arms. This is going to be mohair with a pattern, I believe. We'll see if it's stiff like mohair. Oh yes, absolutely. A little bit scratchy. Nice looking though. Priced at $3.70 with the chair. I have to say out in the West Coast where modernism is a big thing, I would expect this set to maybe sell for over $500 potentially. And for you French market and shabby chic folks, this is what real old painted furniture looks like. This is a pie safe. It was probably left in a place that didn't have climate control for a very long time. It might have sat out in somebody's barn. It looks a little bit rickety, but it is very, very true because the paint has alligatored. Some of it has chipped off over time. This is what real old painted furniture looks like. At one time, all those tin panels had been painted. They're perforated to let the air in and out to cool the pie, but not let insects in. That was the whole point of a pie safe back then. And even on the inside, you've got the neat old paint. Now, a lot of this paint had lead in it. So if you have little kids, you probably want to varnish it with a shellac or something so that they can't get to it. And you definitely nowadays probably wouldn't use it for food storage. 
but as long as you're not eating old lead paint, it really is inert. It's not going to really do anything to you. Now here's an old pie safe, and this one is older as well, that was not painted originally. This one had paint or shellac or varnish on the outside, letting the door swing on purpose so you can see it as it goes through the light. And then the insides, of course, wouldn't have been painted at all. And this one was left in walnut because they used a little better wood. The painted ones usually were some cheap wood like fir or local pine or something where it had a lot of knots or something about it that wasn't appealing to the eye. And so they would paint those pieces, but they'd leave a nice walnut cabinet because that was a little fancier. And one more pie safe. We're definitely in the part of the country where you see this kind of country furniture. It's very popular on the coasts, and actually pie safes seem to sell pretty well all over the country. Because it's a good look and it's a little bit more distinctive than just some wood piece of furniture. Here's another thing that's popular with 50s modern collectors. These are the Daisy Rocket Ice Crushers. And these have the transparent colors. You don't see them as much. Daisy was known for making churns and things. And then in the 50s, they went into other housewares. I think you can see the Daisy name, perhaps, in the plastic there. You've got transparent yellow, red, and orange. These are priced about $40 each. And, you know, in perfect shape, that's about right. These have a little bit of wear. The one on the left's actually in the best condition. Cats and owls. Boy, people like cats and owls nowadays. I think cats never really lost their popularity. This set of three is priced at 16. It's not a bad price because they have the rhinestone eyes. I believe these are Rose Lane sparklers made in California. And it's cute that it has the whole set with the kittens. Oh, hey, I stand corrected. They are Japanese. I thought they seemed a little thin for Rose Lane. So this is a Japanese knockoff of Rose Lane, but still for 16, it's a good price. This is a really pretty waterfall deco bedroom set with the tracery and a lot of these they look like veneer some of it is you can tell veneer when you open up here you can see how it's pieced together wood and then you've got a line here that means that the top is a veneer and they use various woods for the veneering it gave a really attractive look to it and a lot of dimension. And people who are into Art Deco really like these. This is a four-piece set. There's the vanity. Next to it you have this piece, which is nice because it's got an etched mirror matching the vanity. So this was a fancier set in its time. And then it has the two little drawers on top. These would have been for your gloves, your jewelry, accessories, and things like that. It's also interesting because this one has the dark wood with the parquetry in the middle with the different colors and it's a little bit curved and that's intentional. You can see it's original because it's got the same handles. That was just to give it even a little bit more fancy dimension. And then the fourth piece in the set is the bed. And the bed is a, looks like a full-size bed. We really don't see queen beds until later in time. It's a pretty set for the price. You know, if you needed a, sweat, a set, or in this part of the country they call a suit of furniture, this would be a nice way to fill a room. And here we have a Wonder Horse and an adult-sized saddle. Wonder Horses originally had a frame this would have sat on with springs so that you could bounce up and down. It was a popular thing with 50s and 60s era kids. Nowadays, they're mainly used as decoration. In fact, there's a house not far from here where they've got about 20 of these in a row. It looks like an entire row of horses running a race, sort of the Kentucky Derby in plastic. I thought it was very cute. Speaking of plastic, here's a bunch of briar plastic horses. You've got the Arabian. You have some colts and ponies. You have the pinto ponies up here. These are all priced with the discount that they're doing right now somewhere in the 12 to 15 dollar range primarily so good prices if you collect briar this isn't old but it's definitely on the right track <laughs> i know if uh, your kids really need help of course you should try to help them out but i keep telling my mom enjoy your life while you've got it so go spend by inheritance we'll just have to make more
This is a cool thing. This is the Shelly Foss. Foss always ready tugs and barges. Foss tugs are something that I'm familiar with from out in Tacoma, Washington, where there's the Thea Foss waterway. And I actually think there is a connection. This one is remote controlled. It was probably made around 1970. And it's got everything, including the anchor. It's priced at 325. Old remote control stuff is valuable. I think that's probably a fair price for what it is. This place has an ice cream soda fountain as part of their operation, which is great. You've got the Mayfield Jersey ice cream sign. Of course, that stays with them. And here are all the flavors. So you can get a nice snack while you're shopping to keep you going. It's called the Pig's Tail Ice Cream Shop. The pig thing is a thing here in Cadiz. Just like Lexington, Kentucky has the horses all over town that are painted in different ways, Cadiz's theme is pigs, and they've got all these little piggies painted in various ways on the streets out here. It's very cute. Also, they've got a neat showcase full of items here, some of which are for sale. Some are local items that I think may be staying with the shop from old establishments. And boy, there's a lot more in Cadiz that we're going to see soon. Small pieces. <laughs> A little piece of uh, redware, probably was the bottom of a pitcher and bowl set, I would think, but it's only a buck. Cute, I like the and color. It's an unstamped uh, base, it's got the gold trim with the pine cones for two bucks. Very nice. So, cool, well we all found Hangover. stuff. Yeah. So we all found something here today and we're all in line, except for Mary Beth and Laura who already bought theirs. So they are sitting on the lovely mohair couch. What a fun day, it's just been so great. <laughs> Thanks for joining me here at the Antique Nomad. I'm on the Periscope, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook with daily posts on social media and weekly videos here on YouTube. It's so great to have you with us and thanks for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at the Antique Nomad. Bye for now!